Hey y'all, it's your girl Amaya Zay, back with another YouTube tutorial. I know I've been gone for a very long time, but I am back and I'm better. Today we're going to be focusing on knotless soft locks. Before we begin this tutorial, I want to let you all know that the hair that is used in this video will be put in the description box below, so go check that out. Also, um, this style is not, it doesn't, it's not a quick style, like it does take time. I know that was an issue before, but this style does take time. But without further ado, let's get into it. So as you can see, I'm basically starting from the front and then I move on to the back. Um, I like to do the front first because with my soft locks, the soft locks alone are heavy. Depending on even, it just depends on the length of the, the locks that you're getting. But this particular client got... Um, 36 inch lock so of course i always do the front small and the back bigger and that's just off the simple fact that i do not like to create a heavy style um i know they can be very heavy so what you see me doing now is just parting off the front and i'm just making my parts real small up here because again Everyone is looking at the front, you know, some people look at the back too, but I'm very big on making sure that my clients sleep out of there and can go to sleep at night and be very comfortable. Okay, so now, as you can see, I am basically about to get into braiding. Now, when I braid, I typically want to braid, I suggest braiding a good two or three times at first. And I say at first because, of course, I'm going to add in a lock extension. And the way that I add this lock extension in, I will get to explain to you a better reason why I braid down this much. It, it just really depends on how long you want that knotless effect to be. Like, it's hard to explain, honestly, but once you see it, I will be able to probably explain a little bit better. So, as you can see, I'm over here trying to show y'all the lock extension. I wouldn't even get my hand right in the video. But this is the lock extension that I am talking about. I use Bobby Boss New Locks. Um, this client got 36 inch. Now, I hate that ball point right there. So what I do is I customize it. Like, it's so annoying. These locks are super, super thick. So what I do is I customize this lock to the way that I want it. And how I do that is I split the lock in half. You will be able to see. Not I split it in half, but at first I'm going to untwist it to be able to cut it so what you're gonna need is some scissors um i'm sorry if you can't see as much i tried my very very best this is my first time filming on my new camera so bear with me but you're going to untwist the lock just a little bit don't do too much and you're going to try to split it in half and i say try because sometimes it won't split all the way down in half but sometimes they will it just really depends but as you can see, I have this one in three sections. You're going to just snip, snip off one piece of it. Like, it's literally a loop. And then you're going to cut off the other side. It's that simple. It's hard to really explain. Like, you just have to play around with them just to really see. But it's just to basically thin it out. That's why I do it. To thin it out. Okay? So, to explain what I was talking about at first. I typically only break down just so much. Like, I'll probably do a good three times two or three times at the at the most that's just because the fact that i thinned out that lock the hair is less hair there so with that being said you want it to be as natural looking as possible and you don't need to bring that lock all the way down like you don't need to bring the braid down to the point to where the lock is all the way at the bottom of the braid you don't have to do that because because you thinned it out as you can see if you look at the lock it is all of that room that you're going to wrap is going to be perfect like it's going to be neat so that is why i do that after i have put that lock in there i am going to braid down a good four to six times and i say that because it will slip out i'm telling you it will slip out while you're trying to wrap it so you want to make sure that braid is secure like especially around the edges 
mainly because the edges are fine so they're going to be easier to come apart okay so now i'm going to get my afro spring twist by ultra i think that's how you pronounce it ultra ultra expressions now about this type of hair it comes bulky it comes thick you're not about to take that whole bundle and wrap it around that lock no you're going to take off a section of the hair and then you're going to feel for that section and take a thin 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 piece like I can't express how thin it needs to be like honestly you would just have to see it and play around with it for you to get the gist but it's gonna be real thin like it, it does not have to be big the less hair the better and I think that's one of those things that I've learned while doing um soft locks faux locks whatever the less hair that you use the thinner the hair the better it is going to look the more natural it's going to look so you want to get the thinnest piece of hair and you're going to take it and you're going to rotate like you're going to just twist it over there and i'm gonna i'm gonna have more clips for y'all to see what i'm talking about because i was moving pretty fast but that's just because i have experience so i can afford to do that but if you know what you're doing it shouldn't be hard like i used to use crochet needles but now i don't use crochet needles and i the only reason for that is because it snugs snap uh, snugs and pulls when i'm trying to you know put it in their hair especially doing small parts so i don't even use the crochet needle anymore Okay, so this is where I have to slow things down a bit for you all. So, again, this is a lock that was already kind of thin, but I feel like personally you still need to thin it out as much as you can. So, what I did was I'm still doing the same thing. It don't matter how thin you think the lock already is or how thick it is. No matter what, still cut it. So, again, I split that lock in half okay and I'm taking my scissors and as you can see this was a lock that would all that split all the way down versus the other one that was shown it wouldn't budge it was in like to like three pieces I think but this one split all the way in half so I'm basically cutting that one side off and letting that piece hang the hanging piece is the one that's going to be cut so you see me now about to take that third leg and cut it off and once you're done with that, you're just going to toss it, like trash it. You don't need it anymore. So now, basically, you have a thin lock. Don't you see how thin that is? Like, that's how your lock should look. They should be thin. That's the only way you're really going to get that knotless method is if you take that knot away. And the only way to take the knot away is if you thin it out. So that's how I personally do it. 
Now I'm going to put the lock into the braid. I'm sewing this down for y'all because I'm sure it's hard to see, but I take that right strand and I'm putting it through the loop. It doesn't matter which one you put it through. I'm just right-handed, so I always result to my right side of everything. So once I do that, I'm going to braid it down a good four to six times, um, or really all the way down. It doesn't matter. I mean, I personally don't do all the way down because that's too time consuming. I just braid it all the way down to the point to where I feel like it's secure enough. Like my, some of my clients here are literally, they can have fine hair, soft hair, thick hair, you know, coarse hair. It just really depends. So if you know your client hair, if you know your hair, then it shouldn't be hard for you to determine how long you should braid or when you should stop. I'm now taking my spring twist hair. Remember, you want it to be as thin as possible. And I'm going to wrap it over the lock in the braid. When I'm wrapping at the root, you're going to secure it by wrapping it three times in the same spot. I do that because if you only do it once, it's going to slip out. I'm telling you. It's not going to be like you don't want to be too too picky about that knotless look. Like as long as it's giving knotless, you're good. So wrapping it two or three times in the same spot is fine. But as after that, you need to be moving down. So once I do that, I'm continuing to move down. Um, and I'm just going to go down as far as I want it to be. Like you're supposed to wrap neat that entire time. But me, I don't really care. I don't like my locks to look the same. So I'm not particular about how it looks. I'm not that neat, neat person. I don't care. So as you see, I'm just trying to see how far I want it to go down. And once I've done that, I am going to just wrap any type of way. Like I'm wrapping, but I'm skipping, you know, a few spaces. Like it's just a all around the world type of wrap after I've wrapped as neat as possible in the beginning. And doing that is going to give it that distressed look and make it pop out. So you can just like, you'll be able to see, okay, she wrapped me in this part, but also it got messier at the end. So that is the reason for me doing that. Like wrap me in the beginning. And then once you get to the, you know, the desired destination point in the lot, you can go ahead and just wrap however you want. I want to say that this next part is self-explanatory, however, it's not. So like what I'm doing is I'm showing you all that the thickness of that, I feel like it was too thick. So I'm taking, I'm feeling for it and I'm just taking off a thin strand. Like I want y'all to understand that it is okay to literally wrap it a few times at the beginning and then decide, okay, no, I don't like this. I need to take some hair out from it. It's fine. Like that's not the issue. Always remember that it's better that you test it out first instead of just going ahead and doing the whole thing and then regretting it later. So that's what I suggest you do. That's one of my tips that I would, pointers that I would do. 
just test it out at first. And if you feel like that is not the size that you want it to be, go back in, take it down, you know, um, and take some hair away. So now what you see me doing is showing how I end the lock. So what I'm about to do is I'm basically just continuing to wrap all the way down past my client's natural hair. So like I told y'all, this part is fast for me because it's not a neat, like it doesn't have to be neat. You want it to be messy. Like you want it to look like it is distressed, um, semi-distressed or whatever, you know, butterfly look or whatever y'all like to call it. You want to give it that look. So I'm just wrapping messy all the way down. And as I go down, I'm going to literally bring it back up. I don't know if it really showed it, but it's just me going down and the little lift, you know, the shorter, the, the short piece that I have from the, the spring twist there, I'm just wrapping it up. My hands move too fast for me to even be able to explain, explain it, but yeah. So basically this portion of the video, the rest of the video is basically self-explanatory. And I'm not gonna say self-explanatory, but I've basically given all that I can give as far as the details on these on this method that I use to get the knowledge look. Um, so I'm done talking. Um, if you like this video, um, please feel free to leave your feedback, um, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos. I really want to get back into YouTube, so I would love for y'all to just leave some thoughts or some suggestions of content or videos that y'all would like to see in the description. I mean, not the description, the comment box below. Um, but yeah, I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. Continue to watch if you did not understand um, some of the stuff that I was saying in the beginning. You could just sit and watch or, you know, go back or whatever. Do whatever you have to do. I just hope that this video was useful for you all. Until next time, bye.